Hello Matrix and welcome to another video and let us keep our steam train on the go. So we are doing still that uh, November 2020 physical science paper 2. Now we are upon question 2. Alright, so question 2 reads, Vitesh works at a chemical company and has been asked to design an industrial process to produce sulfuric acid. Okay. Now you know from your theory, once you hear that word industrial process to produce sulfuric acid, that's what is called the contact process. Okay? Contact process and then of course essentially because of the vanadium pentoxide That enzyme, that end, uh, sorry, not enzyme, but a uh, catalyst is the so-called contact catalyst. And that's why that process is called the contact process. And you know very well this is used in the step number two, which is the catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide gas to sulfur trioxide. Okay. Not a problem. So let's just keep moving and see how far we can go. Now we are told the, one of the reactions in the production of sulfuric acid is the roasting that is heating in oxygen of a metal ore that contains lead to sulfide. Again you have a particular way of writing. Once you see these sort of Roman numerals following some metal it tells you its oxidation state. So it's oxidation state here. The oxidation state of lead is 2 plus, basically. That's what that 2 means. And then, of course, if you just want to know what this notation is called, it's called the stock notation. Okay. So it's called the stock notation. Basically, this is just to help to differentiate the oxidation numbers that the metal takes. All right. If you have two Zamas in your class, when you're talking about Zama, someone is not going to be sure which one. But if you say Zama Makamba or Zama Nube, then you know you're using the correct surname at least, then it helps to correctly identify which substance you're talking about. And again, here it helps us because we know there's elements in that transitional zone. They are capable of multiple oxidation numbers, so it helps us to know which one. Okay, not a problem. Let's have a look um, what is the story here. So we can see here lead sulfide and three oxygen. They make up two molecules of lead oxide and sulfur dioxide gas. Okay. Now that we know that lead is the two plus, we know sulfur is an element of group six, so it becomes a two minus. And how do you get that? just say group number minus 8 which gives it 2 minus. It tells you that it is in excess of 2 electrons here. Alright, so everything multiplied by 2 so it's essentially balanced, okay? Again, this is an ionic substance. Oxygen is also 2 minus. Everything is balanced, okay? And this one is not an ionic substance so it's not very nice to try and do oxidation numbers here but if you want to oxygen is 2 minus times 2 it becomes 4 minus okay and then that means sulfur is taking a 4 plus but you will know that from inorganic chemistry sulfur is capable of multiple oxidation numbers but remember this is not an ionic substance this is sort of like a covalent molecule if I may call it that all right, guys, so let me just divert a little bit here to give you a bit of an understanding of what we are to do here. So let's look at the electronic structure of um, lead. So from our periodic table, where is it now? Okay, from the periodic table, we know that lead is an element of group 4. Therefore, it must have some valence electrons that are sort of four, okay, but it's not exactly true now in this instance. 
but it's element number 82 so that's the atomic number so if we are to fill in these electrons we fill in them we fill them in like that then of course when you fill in the p orbitals you always first fill them in one by one okay so you can tell here it's going to be a little bit of work but we can do it so I know once we get there we have 20 okay so this d orbital accommodates 10 so it's going to be 30 after this so we can cheat here okay this is 30 and then I know the p orbital can carry 6 I can cheat also here what do I mean by cheating? You don't have to fill one, 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 and then double up later. Okay, you can just do it at once. Okay, so we have 36, right? Uh, 38, then there's 10 here. Then we're going to get 48 here. Okay. 50, 52, 54, 56. Now, these f orbitals, they carry 14 electrons. So, 56 here. This one is going to be full, so I can cheat. There we go. Um, I sh my position of a foot is on my nerves, so okay. Then I have only two here. Okay, so that is essentially the structure of lead, and you can see here that this orbital is poorly filled, so the deficit is too great. Hence, it can get rid of these two electrons. Let's just compare it with the sulfur. Sulfur is element number 16, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay? So sulfur can take two. So you can tell that the reaction between these two this one will have to transfer those two electrons and then they will show up there okay so that means when sulfur accepts these two electrons it becomes a two minus and then this one by losing these two electrons it becomes a two plus and that's why now we can see that lead sulfide that means one atom of lead mixes up with uh, one atom of sulfur okay and it's nicely balanced like that and then of course you know here you can't call this a molecule because it's an ionic substance so this one is two plus and then there's an ionic bond here with that one being two minus okay which is essentially the electrostatic force so you can see how these work together. Of course, I'm just showing you this structure so that you know exactly what is going on here. Now let's compare with that one of oxygen. Oxygen is element number eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Obviously, oxygen also says, bring me two electrons. Okay? Then they will fill up and satisfy the octet rule okay the good thing is when all orbitals are filled up in a balanced fashion like that two electrons in each uh, sub orbital then it means it's more stable so that's why this lead 2 plus is much more stable because once you shed those electrons it's much stable and these ones are stable as well because these ones are now nicely filled in so this is just to try and explain this link here as you can see we just took one atom of lead and another atom of sulfur and don't worry about this balancing coefficient it's just for the whole equation 
and then you look here PBO as well there's no need to have a subscript for the oxygen because it's 2 minus and 2 plus and then of course we said this is a covalent molecule rather than you would say um, it is an ionic one so again if you were to assign oxidation numbers though the sulfur carries a 4 plus there with oxygen carrying a 2 minus okay and then of course this whole balancing came from the fact that Dalton's experiments they showed that whenever there's a chemical reaction there's a conservation of mass now you can calculate the total molar mass on the left hand side and compare it with that one you will see that it's the same so that's why we end up trying to balance like that all right now that you know a little bit about these ones so in this case you would ask a question but didn't lead shed its electrons to sulfur what what happened here now did where did it get these extra electrons ah look in a chemical reaction when this one separate lead says you know what bring back what's mine and then this one is like fine I'll find another friend so <laughs> I can share with that one and you know what this one finds also another partner so you see nature is a bit ruthless anyway let's not talk nonsense here what we are trying to do is to answer these questions so let's try without wasting too much time now it says Vitesh does a test experiment in which 36.8 grams of oxygen gas completely once you hear that word completely it means it's a rate limiting reagent uh, with 800 grams of metal ore okay the metal ore basically it's a mixture of multiple other substances or dust so now it says all of the PBS in the ore reacts okay so all of the PBS not just a portion of it but all of it and it says only the PBS in the ore reacts with oxygen so meaning the oxygen doesn't react with other components of that ore but it only reacts with PBS okay that's a bit of an elaborate statement there question says define molar mass okay now we know that molar mass is in grams per mole right or how you guys write it is grams times you know like that it's still the same thing so some of the definitions you don't already know okay or at least they're not so commonly asked so it becomes a bit of a challenge to answer them so all you know is that your capital letter M is grams per mole so all we can say here it is a mass or a mass a mass or a mass okay in grams because we see that is grams in grams for one mole of a substance okay I think that is better so once you get stuck just remember some SI unit will already tell you the definition of that parameter so you walk away with your two marks there it says now calculate the amount in moles of oxygen that reacted okay now that's a nice question there so we were told here oxygen okay fine let's do it 2.1.2 so the number of moles of oxygen gas is going to be the mass of oxygen gas divided by its molar mass. Now the mass we were told is 36,8 divided by now the molar mass of oxygen is going to be 16 plus 16 isn't it because it's a diatomic molecule oxygen's mass number is 16 so you double that I'm just showing it so that you know where that 32 will come from in case you see a 32 uh, let's just do it easily here so it's going to be 36,8 divide by 32 basically so I have 1,15 mole okay so that's the answer which is very easy not too complicated again here 
for the formula you get a mark I think for this calculation rather than you would say the substitution uh, then the answer gives you the three marks of that question okay so let's move quickly now next question says calculate the mass of pure lead sulfide in the metal ore okay pure lead sulfide so we're going to use the rate limiting agent which is oxygen to tell us how much of this was used up but we know that this was completely used okay not a problem so we go and say 2.1.3 okay what we're going to do here we know that two moles of lead sulfide reacts with three moles of oxygen gas okay but now we know that now the number of moles that reacted is 1,15 mole of oxygen now what is the number of moles here of lead sulfide okay so all you do here is cross multiplication this implies now that we have x times 3 is going to be equal to now you put an equal, an equal sign here 1 comma 5 times 2 all right therefore we know that our x is going to be 1 comma 5 1 5 times 2 divide by this one day please 3 which will tell us the number of moles first so 1 comma 1 5 times 2 divide by 3 I get this one is 0 comma 7 6 6 6 6 6 how many numbers are here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you just write it as it is. Or you can round off to as many numbers as possible. But that is mole. The problem is if you round off A, you're going to be in trouble. Okay? You're going to be in trouble. Therefore, we know now that that is the number of moles of the lead sulfide okay the number of moles of lead sulfide is that then this implies that the mass of our lead sulfide is going to be the number of moles multiplied by its molar mass which is going to be 0 comma 7666 okay it continues like that multiplied by what is this uh, I think its mass number is 207 plus that of sulfur is 32 okay so now let's do that one so I have here 0 comma 7 6 1 2 3 4 ish let me start all over 1 comma 1 5 oops times 2 divide by 3 okay and then I multiply this by 207 plus 32 so I get uh, 183 comma 2 to two decimal places 2 3 grams okay so that is easy pretty great 11 stuff you know so I guess the one that you had to calculate is this one and that one and then this number of moles okay that is all your mathematical skills which you're not really being tested for them but you are rather allowed to apply them so there is our three marks and then we smile and keep going all right so last question says 
Hence calculate the mass percentage of the lead sulfide in the metal ore. Okay. The mass percentage of Okay, now it says how much percentage of that metal ore is lead sulfide. So 2.1.4. We know that the mass percentage of Pb sulfide is going to be the mass of pure lead sulfide over the mass of ore the metal of course times a hundred this is going to be one eight three comma two three divide by they told us that was eight hundred multiplied by hundred and then of course the zeros charge either there and then all we have is just one eighty three comma two three divide by eight this is two two comma nine zero percent all right so that means twenty two comma nine which is approximately twenty three percent is the pure lead again here um, how many marks are giving us two marks so maybe for the substitution and then for the answer we have our two marks and then we smile on all right so let's do the last part I hope I didn't take forever because it's not my intention to do that okay in another test experiment Vitash reacts 50 grams of sulfur trioxide okay, with water. We know that this is high, highly reactive, so it reacts with water easily. And then to form sulfuric acid, and then there it is. So, now it says the amount of sulfur trioxide present in the container is monitored. Amount of SO3 gas is monitored over time. So that tells you any changes will tell you about the reaction rate mm, okay he plots the following graph of course we know we started with 50 and then as time went on it decreased until we had about 15 grams left okay so we know what we used here it's going to be the difference between the two okay which is what is going to help us to calculate the reaction rate if we have to okay now it says Mendy says that Vitesh cannot use sulfur trioxide to determine the amount of sulfuric acid produced because the SO3 is not the rate limiting agent she's right about that because it remains so it's in excess but I don't think that could be true if we know what we know okay it says now evaluate Mendy's statement. Yeah, let's just do it here. I think here she is incorrect. Okay, the rate limiting reagent is not necessarily the only thing that we can use, but it's user friendly, I guess. <laughs> she is incorrect. Why? Since it is known. Okay, let's just say since um, uh, since it is known that fifty grams of SO three was present initially, right? And 15 grams remained at the end of the reaction. Therefore, the amount used is known, which will help. 
<laughs> Sorry guys, I'm running out of space. I started singing now instead, which will help determine the amount of H2SO4. Okay. I hope I didn't sing too much. I tried to sing less, but then it got complicated. But again, it's the choice of my words, I guess. So she is incorrect since it it is known that 50 grams of sulfur trioxide was present initially and 15 remained at the end of the reaction. It therefore tells us the amount used is known, which will help to determine the amount of sulfur, I mean of sulfuric acid produced maybe let's just say that okay forgive me for the writing I mean I'm not the best writer ever so don't cry about it all right <laughs> okay um, all right folks uh, we are still working on our IEB uh, paper 2 we're doing question 2 I hope you liked it and course uh, do the thing <laughs> if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you think you want to continue learning what I am able to provide you may as well hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted each time something new comes up from me all right guys I'll see you in the next video bye bye